Welcome back, everyone, to the Lobster Roll Series Week 5. Iron Man, your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are starting out with a... Looks like it is going to be Stuart and Steel Blue. I mean, Golda and Madcraft is the other match, but I'm... I mean, we'll see if... <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, Golda really is the favorite to win the tournament. I, I kind of feel bad for Madcraft right now, but they have a chance in the lower bracket. Anyway, I'm sorry, I just, eh. Anyway, let's start up. We're doing Steel Blue versus Stuart. And so far, Mercurial Mechanzodia and Frosty Cove have been banned. So it could be Baron, Intersection, Iski, or Fallendell. Oh, we're just going to be on Fallendell. Okay. So everything but Fallendell has been banned. We are on to Fallendell. Much more to be expected, and probably more tank time. Probably a lot more tank time, actually. I mean, tanks are definitely a, a factor I've seen a lot on this map. I mean, tank versus amph bots could happen. Would not surprise me. Wouldn't be the first time. All right, so game is about to begin. So Stuart going for rovers. Not really surprising. Good map for it. Steel blue, what are you doing? What factory are you going for? Amphbots! So, Amphbot versus Rovers. Alright, well, that is that is not surprising. I mean, I just it's not surprising for Fallen Dell. This map has some really unexpected, normally would be unexpected map matchups, or factory matchups, but... Yeah, that's a that's a thing that happens. So we do indeed have Rover for Zampbot. Stewart. Eh, it's going for kind of a typical start. Actually, no, that's not a typical starting approach. That's a really aggressive approach. Three Scorches to a Mason. Like not even getting the Mason early. Just going immediately to the Scorchers. On the other hand, Steel Blue going for Conch first before even building a single duck. So Steel Blue definitely much more on the economic side. Stuart thinking they just want to raid out as quickly as possible to stop Steel Blue from building anything, really. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it's, again, a matter of timing. Like, if Steel Blue is able to defend what they're building up, they're going to be fine. Stuart has to get something on those raids, and luckily for them, there is, in fact, a completely vulnerable conch over to the north side of the map, which this Scorcher should be able to kill. I mean, it's... No, it's, it's done. It's dead. That Scorcher, that Scorcher has it. Ducks will not be able to come in time. That is a dead conch. Ducks trying to come in to save the day, but they're just not going to be in time. If, why is this conch not moving? She might have lived a fitted run. But as it is, the conch is dead. Same time went over to the south. That doesn't find much. So, yeah, dead conch... That's not a bad trade. Scorch is still alive, too. The Stewart, unfortunately, wasn't really expanding a whole lot behind them. They're still behind when it comes to their economy. Still blue. They had the commander and the conch expanding. Stewart just now started getting a mason expanding. So they're still... They still might want to do a bit more raiding before they actually consider themselves even, relatively, economically speaking. Like, it's, it's this cluster that matters. If if Stuart can take this cluster, they might be okay. Like, it'll they'll have to win the later game, which is fine. But I don't know if it's going to happen. Oh, okay, those ducks those ducks put a real dent in Stuart's ability to actually do anything there. 
In fact, overall, the ducks are making it very difficult. We're seeing early Steel Blue going for the plate. They just want mass ducks. They don't even care. Just spam the ducks. I mean, it's working. I can't blame them. Stewart already kind of realizing they've got to put some defenses up, setting up a Lotus and two against three ducks. Against three ducks, it, it might work. I mean, ducks kind of low on the DPS side, but well, that's two volleys. Just five ducks, one Lotus will not be enough. Anything else being built up? Okay, a Lotus is being built up later. It's nothing right now, though. And Steel Blue... Also, can not make sure their energy infrastructure is still good. But yeah, that's what I mean. That Lotus is not going to work. Mason's going to go down as well. Steel Blue getting a nice revenge raid. And not only that, they got a much stronger position to really push in and deal some damage. Ripper set up from Stewart to at least provide a little extra support to get rid of the ducks. But that's feels too little too late, honestly. Same time, though. More Scorch is coming in. The ducks cannot catch up with them. And that is another dead conch. So Stewart is not letting Steel Blue get away with this for free. Or at all, for that matter. The Ducks just went down to the Ripper as well. I mean, yeah, if you're going to go hard on Ducks, then opponent's going to go hard on Riot units. I mean, no, just the one Ripper, really? I don't think Stewart quite realizes that Steel Blue is going for mass duck, Like, seriously mass Ducks. It plate plate plate. That's that's all they're building is ducks. I think Steel Blue is what how many ducks do you even have? Two dozen ducks in the map in total. Six in the bottom and like eighteen over the top. Well soon to be eighteen over the top. Sheesh. One track build option, but I guess that means rippers are a good choice to counter. Or at least they would be. I mean, ducks are half skirmisher. It's a, this is a tough call. Man, Steel Blue really pushing hard on that duck. I'm going to be... I am going to be very interested to see what happens with this. Well, ducks come in, ducks rip apart whatever units try to counter them, ducks run away. They don't regen health, that's the one thing that's kind of useful when it comes to fighting them, but they're still scary. More rippers coming in though, nice shot off that ripper though, gets rid of most of the ducks. That'll force the Alu to retreat with those ducks, but then the ducks over to the north, not so much. Stewart's commander is dead. There is no way around. This commander is done. That was... I mean, that commander has radar, too. It wasn't really much of an excuse there. Stewart just wasn't paying attention. And that leads to a dead commander. Bulkhead over the south as well. All sieged up, ready to go. And that's... Even more... Oh, boy. These ducks over to the north are... Looking to be the death of Stewart if Stewart can't deal with him. Scorchers are coming in, but Scorchers aren't really enough. It's got to be... It, it can't be Scorchers. It has to be Rippers. And that is not happening. Where are the Rippers? Ripper Fencer. Is that new? Okay, that is, that is the new composition here. Ripper Fencer. Good choice. I like it. Might be too little too, too little too late, though. But Steel Blue's not that far ahead economically. However, attrition-wise, yeah, 2,000 metal, that's a lot. Yeah, this... This amount of ducks are free right now. Like, this entire army of ducks is just attrition advantage for Steel Blue. That, that entire army, two dozen ducks... That's just the, the attrition advantage Steel Blue has, independent of whatever economic advantage they might have. Ripper Fencer might win, might do the trick. It'll be tricky, but if it does, that'll at least give Stuart 98 some room to breathe. So right now they haven't got any. 
Oh. Yeah, for Orpheus in chat, wondering, who has not been in Zero K for a long time, wondering what the bulkhead is. The bulkhead is basically the Amphbot siege tank. That is that is what they are. They they stop, they fire. They're really strong artillery. It's a new unit that was added about eight months ago, I think. They're handy for dealing with buildings. I I think they're okay with tanks. They seem to be okay in this matchup, but not against Scorchers. Or not necessarily, anyway. So, yeah, Ampod got a new unit within the last year. A lot of people in chat today who have not actually seen or played the game in months, so it's interesting. Showing off. Yeah, there's a lot of changes that have happened. I mean, this map is brand new. This... The bulkhead is new. Guardian drones, I think, are new relative to when the last time someone there would have played. Although, I don't think there's any Guardian commanders in this one. No, there was Strike over to the top and, and Econ to the bottom. Anyway, back to the end of the Steel Blue. Twice the economy. Four. Okay, seriously. Yeah. Also, factory plates. I think these are also new. Where you build next. Essentially, you build a second factory, but it's a cheaper version that can build units so long as the base factory is alive. And that is. The thing. Not sure Scorchers were useful early. Stuart, I'm not sure Scorchers were useful at all during this matchup. I mean, they were a little useful in the early bits, but it's like, yeah, the Ripper Fencer is probably going to be the way to go. Maybe with some Ravager, but it's like you got to get like the ducks are a big threat. Archers are also a big threat. Like this, this Ripper is going to be causing a lot of damage. If there was a second Ripper behind it, the duck ball would probably be dead. But I don't know why they'd expect Scorchers to be useful late game. Raiders aren't often useful late game. And that is it. Stewart throws in the towel. Steel Blue advancing to the winner's finals. And that is that. Oops. Steel Blue has advanced to the winner's finals. Gorda and Madcraft still going. Apparently. You can see in the bracket that they have not finished up their match yet, so we might as well check it out. Oh yeah, so for those of you who aren't familiar, the plates are basically... They're kind of a replacement to the... Where's Golda and Madcraft? Oh, I think it's over. Oh, no. No, it's not. It's going. Oh, never mind. They just... So, yeah. Golden and Madcraft are done. We'll be moving on to Steel Blue versus the winner? I mean, it was eight minutes. I'm guessing... Not sure who won, actually. Okay, go to one. So, go to versus Steel Blue. That is going to be the next... That's going to be the winner's finals. We are not taking a break. We're going straight on to it. But yeah, basically, plates are kind of an alternative to caretakers. So, we have caretakers that add... Or workers that add metal into the factory and produce just a single unit faster. Plates have... Plates basically have the standard factory build power of 10, but they have an, they're an extra build queue for that factory. So if you want to build a bunch of lighter units alongside a heavier unit, or just a bunch of light units, you can have a bunch of fact plates. Whereas if you're wor worried more about building single heavy units, then you don't really need that. You might want to focus more on caretakers or having constructor assist. So basically the way it works is that you build a factory normally, and then if you build, if you prompt to build another factory of the same type 
within a radius, it's like 500 elmos or something, then you instead get a fact plate, which is a cheaper version of the factory that can't operate without the main factory alive nearby, but gives you an extra build queue for that type of factory. And also its own 10 build power. Hmm. Where's Golda? Okay, there's Golda. Ah! It's too already left. All right, there we go. We are ready. So we have another series of map bands that will be happening. I believe it's going to be Steel Blue doing the first set. Yeah, Orphelius is exactly right. Factories have a minimum time for not building the unit. They have a minimum time for the unit walking off the factory. So if you have plates, then you can get... It, it's a bit more efficient because now it's walking off of two or three different factories instead of just one, so it cuts that time down effectively. The the other advantage is that if you have like a grizzly or a cyclops, I guess, like if you have something really heavy that you're building, it can be nice to have a plate to build some light support units in the process. You get a little bit less build power into the into the main factory building the heavy unit, but you at least have support units being built the whole time. Also, it's a little bit safer if you're doing any kind of... Any kind of... What's the word? Oh yeah, any kind of like rally pointing stuff. If you have multiple factories, then they just get... It's like groups of three or four rather than one at a time. It's not just relevant for fleas. If you do the maths, glaives actually benefit a lot from it too. Because glaives is 65 metal. So normally 10 metal per second, it's 6.5 seconds plus like, I think half a second or a second or so to walk off the plate. So if you have, you know, 30 build power going in, well, that's, you know, two a little over two seconds per glaive plus the half second or second or so of walking off the, the factory. So for three glaives, that works out to something like well, that adds another second or so at least to the production. So it's about eight seconds or so when you when you get three glaze, whereas with plates, it's more like seven seconds. So it's a minor difference, but when you're talking about building a bunch of light units, it does add up. All right, let's probably track actually what has been banned. So intersection was banned. Oops, Frostica was banned. Baron was banned. And Oh never mind, no 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 Baron wasn't banned. Baron is the map being played, apparently. Alright, so we are on Baron. Anyway, we are going to be... So, Golda and Steel Blue on Baron. Currently, actually, I believe... Yeah, Steel Blue is the second highest seeded player who's actually in the tournament. Unfortunately, Randy and Dregs are both unable to play due to health issues. So, yeah. that That's, a, that's an unfortunate thing that has happened. So, given that, we are going to have Steel Blue and Golda as the top-ranked players currently in the tournament. Okay, Goda's doing something tricky. Steel Blue going for Amph bots in the corner. Oh, Goda's going for jump bots. That's not that tricky. It's kind of tricky, but it's not that tricky. And Goda actually going for early builder? Yeah, okay. Kind of playing a normal, really. Amph bot getting up. Getting some boys. I'm guessing Steel Blue is guessing that they're going to be having to fight jump bots and are just going for boys immediately, just because Pyro. That makes a lot of sense.
I mean, I'm guessing that that's what Steel Blue's thinking. I, I, normally, you wouldn't open with boys with an amph bot, but then again, you also wouldn't often go amph bot on Baron. But again, fighting against Golda on Baron makes a lot of sense that they, go where they normally go for jump bots. So going for boys to counter pyros, that makes a lot of sense. And, of course, I do like that the Steel Blue is being mindful about which expansions to take. Oh, nice. Combination of Drone and Boy. Yeah, Steel Blue knows exactly what they're doing. I like to see that. Not sure what Golda is going to be doing in response, though. The best option I would think of would probably be Jack. Or maybe... Jack's really expensive, though. Maybe Moderator. It's kind of to fight on even footing. Uh, unfortunately, though, Pyro is coming around the side, but there are some defenses available to deal with it. This 1.8 Metal Extractor is probably dead. Nothing is really up to defend it. Steel Blue, what are you planning? Is that a rush, or are you just... Because it, it's pretty far forward. It's, it doesn't look like it's a defensive strategy anymore. And yeah, the 1.8 is down. Steel Blue kind of behind, but I don't think that they're trying to win on economy. I mean, Baron is not a map that you try to win an economy. Oh, that... Oh, I like the idea with the boys, but unfortunately just not enough. Not in the right position. Gota with the Pyro Micro. Is this just a question of trying to get rid of Golda's commander? Is that it? I got the riot cannon. I got the support boy. Maybe it is. I don't know. This is... This ain't looking great, but then again, there's the moderator. Although the mo Oh, but the moderator has to go over the hill. Not ideal. Or in this could go around it. Pyro coming back as well to help support. That does open things up a little bit back in Steel Blue's base, but Steel Blue is clearly going all or nothing with this one. They are not trying to play this, like, long game. They're, they're not playing the late game. They are playing the early game, and they're very much trying to take out Golden now. Is there even a contract? Oh, there is a contract, actually. They could rebuild if they wanted to. But that is evidently not the plan. In fact, Steel Blue's commander might have bitten off more than I can chew. Moderators are... Well, maybe. Oh, the moderators. The moder... Ah, oh, and the power comes in. Nope, the Steel Blue's commander's dead. This is it. Gota has this match. That is game. Almost had it. Kind of like the idea, but nope. Steel Blue throwing in the towel. That is a short winner's finals. So, given that, we might as well have a short break. Be back with the loser's bracket pretty soon, so stay tuned. All right. 